Well, I, I, I graduated from law school on May 9, 2009. Um, after that, I, I took the California State Bar exam, the most difficult exam in the, in the country. I took that in July. And they don't tell you whether you passed or not for about four months. So it wasn't until November 21st that they finally told me that I had passed the California State Bar. And, you know, I was congratulated by everybody and everybody said that it's amazing you passed it on your first attempt and English is your second language and you know you had so much against you you had to be working while you were studying and everything it's not like you could afford to take time off to study and uh, you still did it and so I felt that I was making my dream a reality and then they told me oh but you still have to pass a good moral character um, examination and, and I said what does you know what does that entail and they're like well they just want to make sure that you don't have any crimes that you haven't committed any crimes no DUIs you don't have any uh, outstanding child support or anything I said well I have lived the most boring life that's gonna be a you know a piece of cake uh, but then they said oh and there's also a $600 fee and I was like oh bummer <laughs> I had to it took me a little while to raise $600 and once I did, I mailed my application for a determination of good moral character. That takes six months, uh, but around six and a half months, I hadn't heard from them. So I called them up and I said, hey, what, what gifts? I, I send you my money and I send the application and all the requirements. And they said, oh yeah, Mr. Garcia, we have everything from you and we have excellent references. It seems like you're a wonderful guy. You're just the type of person that we want in the profession. And, and um, we, we are a little bit backlogged, but in a week or two, you should have your, you know, your license. You should be able to practice. And I said, okay, great, that's fine. So again, a week or two went by and um, ultimately I did get a phone call. And they told me, congratulations, Mr. Garcia. Uh, everything's great. You're going to be an attorney. We're going to send you your um, approval so you can get sworn in. And then pretty much in the same breath, she said, oh, uh, let me call you right back and that just you know kind of unleashed this Pand Pandora's box that that let me call you right back when she had noticed that on my application where it said are you a US citizen legal permanent resident or what's your status my answer had been pending that was all I could think of putting since I didn't have any papers and I had an application pending since 1994 so because of that she went to the higher ups and they didn't know what to do with, with that. They had never had an undocumented person uh, pass the bar and uh, actually tell them, I guess, that they were undocumented. And so they didn't know, know what to do with my application. So every week they would say, oh yeah, we just need to run it by this department or this other person or talk to this, this uh, expert or whatever because we never seen it, but don't worry about it, you're gonna be fine. You know, you know, every single time that they told me I was going to be fine and I was going to be okay, I stopped counting the times that they told me that at the 17th time. At that point, I realized that it wasn't going to be okay and that I needed more help than I, than myself, you know, that I needed to get somebody else involved. So I looked around online and, and luckily I was able to find a law firm that um, specialized in state bar defense work and I called called them and I, I talked to a lady at that point I didn't know she, who she was but she said son sounds like you've done everything right I'm sure you know everything's gonna be okay but you know give them another 30 days uh, if nothing happens in 30 days give me a call and we'll make an appointment for you of course 30 days went by and, and nothing they told me no you gotta wait by by this time you know 11 months had gone by it hadn't been six it had already been 11 months I made an appointment with the attorney and luckily she had studied um, my case and when I got there she said, you know, son, this is not right. This is this is a wrong. We want to help you correct. And, uh, and I said, well, I, I, you know, I'm so grateful for that. But I, my biggest question to you is like, how much is it going to cost me because I don't have a dime. And she said, oh, oh don't, don't worry about it. She said, this is not right and we're going to make it right, but we're not going to charge you a dime. And, you know, it's just like then when you realize that you do have angels looking after you, that you, there are good people in the world that, that still do do the profession and are uh, in, the, in the job of being attorneys to do the right thing and help people. And I don't think they knew what they were getting into because 
that case became, you know, a media sensation. It became a case that didn't last a week or two as they probably suspected. They thought that after they, they got involved, it would be maybe 30 days before it was over. And it turned out to be four and a half years. Uh, four and a half years fighting, four and a half years of knocking on doors, asking for support, uh, going to court, going to a California Supreme Court, which was uh, less than friendly. I remember news headlines after our court date at the California Supreme Court saying, no human factor at the California Supreme Court, you no, know, no heart, no emotion. It was, they really didn't care that my life had been on hold almost five years. And it was incredible the amount of support that I was able to rally from both the, the Democrats and Republicans. And it, it was something that it was, it was so incredible that they came together all of a sudden they left their uh, partisan issues aside and, and was an incredible like 91 to three vote. 91 from both sides of the aisles came, came together and said, he needs to have his license, this is not right. And um, <laughs> that landed me, that was exactly today, two years ago, that landed me on the cover of the New York Times. Because they, they said, how, how does an undocumented kid like you manage to mobilize a California legislature, get them to pass a, a law in seven days, which according to them was a, a, a national record on how fast they moved to pass AB 1024, a law that would finally allow me to become an attorney. The ripples from that are incredible because all of a sudden there's gonna be a doctor who before now couldn't be a doctor and maybe he's gonna save a child that's gonna go out and you know, find a cure for cancer or who knows. But you know, just the, uh, the magnitude or the the size of, of the, this door that's been open and the opportunities for future generations is just incredible. Now I know at least a dozen other attorneys from Nigeria, from, from uh, South America uh, that have benefited from Venezuela, uh, who have benefited and are now practicing attorneys without having to fight one day in their life, without having to expose themselves as undocumented. And, and that's a blessing, well, it's not just people from Mexico. As a matter of fact, right now in California especially, the Asian com community has surpassed the number of immigrants that are coming in than the Hispanic community. So there are a lot of misconceptions out there.